they need a, they need a tenant that's yeah. willing to maintain the building. That's the biggest. That's the biggest cost. <coughs> the biggest cost on the bank is, is the land. That thing's got a river running through. I know. Everyone thinks that you're like, you want to be in mm -hmm. Not gonna... 200 million is just a drop in the bucket. The 200 million is just to, to literally get up to the biblical standards. Because mm -hmm. right. you, know, you know, literally, there really is a river that runs through. Oh, I know. I mean, when we yeah. went, there's a tour. We saw downstairs where it was all flooded. No, there's okay. also a river. There's an active river going on the It's always going to flood. No. You don't think so? No. Mm -hmm. uh, no, nature. But, nature but, but the whole thing is, it, it, it's got to be properly, properly worked. You know? But that's not a $500 project. You know? No. Everything they do in that building has to be long term. Right? It's, it's going to be 100 years. Uh, quick fixing is not bad for everyone. Sure, TD11 was going to come because they had a derailment down on 96 feet. Our work train, our work train has a regular train. This is you know, it's a hard spot to work at mm -hmm. the next station to try to fix the, the issue. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know, it's really funny when you're standing on the track and you have a train pass in front of you and a pa train pass behind you and you feel like it's trying to pull you in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I always talk one person on the 7 line. Mm -hmm. And I was fine until I realized that I was on the water and that's when I started having a panic attack. <laughs> and they told everyone, move to the first cars. And so it was so... It was Hello, sir, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah. How are you feeling? Happy New Year's. Happy holidays. And then they didn't open up. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Hi, sir. How are you doing? They were like, no, we just have to be shot. Because mm -hmm. obviously we couldn't walk. We've been missing meetings. We, we got scared there. They want you to walk on the side. They want you to walk on the side. They try to keep you off the tracks because there's tripping hazards. There's a lot of issues. Yeah. And they get that too. Yeah. Why are they? Yeah. Okay. Hi, sir. People suffer minor injuries. Yep. Hi, Syria. Okay. So, our community member is sitting there, but these two are empty. People were from 23 to 25. Anything then? <laughs> no. Okay. You heard about the cop from the 5 2 taking pictures of people's IDs and using them at Starbucks? Okay. The cop from the 5 2 was taking pictures of people's IDs and credit cards and using them at Starbucks. He got arrested on the way out of midnight shift. It was a cop? Yeah, he was taking the picture of the ID and the credit card so you can go use the numbers and all that. You had the security code, the ID, the address. One of the young, the young new guys. So I wonder if that's why we got the new 5-2 commander or if that's the first no. thing to happen on his watch. Yeah. The old guy or the new guy? <laughs> Just so you know, every yep. two years you get a new yeah. commander. Yeah. It's a training precinct. And they waited for the guy to finish his midnight shift and they snatched him when he went to the parking lot. But he parked in the parking lot, so, you know, yeah. <laughs> Only the corrupt ones parked in there anyway. But it's all over the news. That happened, I think, last night or the night before. I wasn't here last month. Yeah. No, last Does night. Does that mean I missed my update for my complaints from the month before?
Knots. <laughs> I didn't come last month either. I heard it was very really exciting last month. It's like executive, but it was more fun. <laughs> it was way more fun. You never come to the executive meetings, why is that? Technically, when they say you were an executive, I thought it was a close meeting, only four to four. Only executive I stuff. I yeah, yeah. They used to kick the public out and hide it with the electives, but that was supposedly wrong practice. I asked that question, and then I was told we can come, and I was first told we can't talk, and I was told we can talk, so it's like, oh, so I feel like nobody no, knew no, exactly. No. So, like, basically, all of our meetings are open to the public. Yeah. But, like, that doesn't mean that the public can comment. That just means that you can observe yeah. the discussion. Now, CV7 has always been known to yeah. allow the public to speak, but that's up to each of the chairs. Because it's in the bylaws, meetings. and even the comptroller's audit said all the public should have the opportunity to speak for anything after the public, after the, the members, then the public, especially for votes and everything. Mm -hmm. So the old practices did not meet up with the ruling. Uh, and then when I asked my questions, everybody started leaving. So hopefully. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a lot of things are in the. Because uh, I was specifically the told the public couldn't go to the executive meetings. Then I was told we can go, we can't talk. Then I was told you can talk, you just have to wait till after the board members. No, at uh, the executive but, yeah. meetings, yeah, there's no. there's. Technically, there's really no public comment. Well, the bylaws allow the public to comment at all meetings, though. Mm -hmm. So unless the bylaws get changed to say that it doesn't count in the executive, it still counts. Oh, for hours? Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Should, it's, it's, it's up to each of the chairs. Yeah. Well, wait, the current by I went to all those bylaws meetings, ma'am. The current mm -hmm. reading of the bylaws says the public has the opportunity to speak at the executive. So I don't know if they want to change them again, but if you read them, it does say that. I'll send you the transcripts and everything. No, yeah, you yeah. have the opportunity, but if the chair gives you the opportunity, yeah, it's always and after the, the members all have one round of questions, sometimes the, round, the members get a second or third round, but it's supposed to be one round each, then the public, and then maybe a second and third. But sometimes the board members get three, four rounds of talk, and nobody wants to hear from the public. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's how like the chair conducts its business. Yeah, but, yeah. Like, our meetings are, are open to the public, meaning that you but can if the still chair's not following the law, observe yeah, the yeah. conversation yeah. and follow up who's saying what and when. Yeah. And then, but that doesn't mean that you can comment at each one of the meetings. Well, Same with the bylaws and certain things, things, yeah, it's for the public anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. As as much as it's acceptable to the public to come. Yeah, you can't speak. They or you have two minutes, speak. yeah. Public don't care. They don't come. I think there's not enough outreach to the public. There's no signs of Food Town, there's no signs at the laundromat, there's no signs anywhere Norwood. You have to like, make, now there's an Instagram and YouTube, but there was no digital anything of the board a couple years ago. So how can the people come if there's nothing there? Mm -hmm to show them where they are. If you build it, they will come. If more people knew, they'll come. Okay, with all yeah, the issues going on too. No, I mean, it's also hard. People have yeah. lives, they have different priorities. Yep, yeah. priorities. And then the ones that do come, we don't get listened to and we I get mean, ignored. Can you imagine me and my little baby running <laughs> up and down? It's just no. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's amazing. It will be a disruption. Mm -hmm. People's wives. Yeah. Like, I don't back have a life. Day, you don't have a life. Back in the day, before anything was electrical and everything, yeah. people really had wives. Yeah. Okay, when you're out on the frontier and you're chopping down your own trees no, to build no. your own house, that makes you a wife. No, no. Okay. And people are very interested <coughs> in how what the government told them what to do. No. Now it's people looking out just to see what they can get off the government for free. No, no. And they don't want to give nothing. So I gotta walk the walk and talk and talk. People who are hard workers, no. we got people who are hardly work. No. And there's always time for something. No. <laughs> okay, because I've seen people who have yeah. 10 kids at home. I don't know how they do it for, to have to spend time for all 10 kids, yeah. plus keep a job and take care of their grandparents. Mm -hmm. When it's a will, there's a work. No. But that's why they're advisory. So, what, what can really be done here? Advisory role. You can go to real electeds, get real power, especially with social media. You can reach out to the higher ups that actually make changes. If I may, yeah. hello, how are you? Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. It's a wonderful fellowship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you on the board? Wait, mm -hmm. uh, he's the new uh, Bronx Board Commissioner for the Department of Transportation. Oh, yeah. 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 The new Keith Calvert. No, I'm going to go over the table. Keith? Yes, we can talk about it. I'll 
Paper trail, and then she can add it to the yeah. website later on. Yeah. What I wanted to say was, if you really think I remember everything that comes out of my mouth, <laughs> I, got, I got it on video, sir. It's okay. I got you. I got you. I'll, I'll hold you to it. Yeah. Hello. Are you the one taking pictures of people's credit cards? <laughs> Sharing oh it with each other for free Starbucks? Wow. You're five yeah. two, right? No. No. Two oh, years. Okay. You guys are good. For now. I got you. Free speech, free speech, you're good. Sir. You can curse and everything. The cops are here. You protect your rights. Hi, how are you? Welcome. You guys gotta come to the quality of your life. This isn't for trash. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you guys came to the um, to the precinct meeting, which was nice. What what I had mentioned to, to Officer Selden was that um, th this meeting, I mean, it's a good meeting for you guys to come to. I have representation here, right? But the the general board meeting is where there's more people from the community, mm -hmm. and it would be it would be nicer for them to see <coughs> your guys' participation that you guys are there, and so that they know who to go to. If they see you on the station, they'll see right. you. you know, it's a, it's a little better, it's a little nicer. Mm -hmm. But we always appreciate you guys being here. They're here nice today. That's on the 23rd. The meeting didn't start yet. Didn't uh, start yet. You're good. Carlos, what's the meeting of the general meeting? It's the yeah, 23rd. The central, yeah, yeah. Central yeah. Yeah. For you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, we appreciate you guys being here. We, there's not going to be a, a lot of the community that comes to this meeting, unfortunately. Usually, it used to be more. Uh, after the Zoom meetings, you guys used to go on the Zoom meetings. I don't want to see you there. So, yes, they are. There was five of us at the Zoom meeting. Hi. first to the door. You got Mr. Andrew, they're here for you. They found you.
Everyone besides the speaker, presenter will remain silent in all the meeting. After each presentation is over, the chair will invite the committee members have questions. Committee members will signify that they have a question by raising their hand when the chair opens the floor. Only those recognized by the chair of the committee will be allowed to speak during the allotted time. We will stay on topic with the agenda items. Any other items will be acknowledged by the chair in <laughs> business or address of the next meeting right after there is time and the committee <coughs> on the topic. <laughs> Following the discussion, the, the questions, discussion and public comment portion, the committee will begin the discussion after each presentation agenda item and will conclude with the decision to vote on a recommendation. When the agenda is finished, the meeting will be adjourned. Thank you. Um, we go to the attendance, please. Um, Edgar Ramos present. Eric Asensio. Eric Asensio present. Daisy Perry. Daisy Perry present. Angela Wilson present. Uh, um, Leslie Harrison. Um, both indicated they probably would make it, so, um, <coughs> Mama Down Sour uh, uh, I'd like to thank the members of TD11 for being present. I know it was a crazy day with the, the, the railway down on 96th Street, so it's good to see you guys actually made it. Thank you, I appreciate you guys' support for coming here. Um, from DOT, we have the Bronx DOT Commissioner. Newly named DOT Commissioner. Anthony Perez, I'm the uh, new uh, Bronx Board Commissioner for DOT. I started just before Thanksgiving, so I'm still getting around to meet everyone and then fill up my account about walkthroughs and, and uh, meeting with weapon officials, different agency partners. Uh, I used to be a member of this board. I used to be a member of this committee. I was young to the committee myself. I, used to, I, was a, I was a treasurer of CB7 and on the executive committee as well. And uh, it's been a pleasure and I'd love to be back home. I actually used to live on two in the Great Concourse, and then on Rochambeau and Gun Hill. I couldn't live further away on the other side of Gun Hill. Uh, but it's just so near and dear to my heart. Uh, it's where I was born and raised, so I'm happy to be in this role. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, for us, safety is paramount. We want to do whatever we can to make our streets as safe as possible for all New Yorkers. Um, when we talk about Vision Zero, making things safer, I think about my mother who still takes the bus to get to PS85 as a teacher. When we talk about uh, the crosswalks and street lights, I can say about my one-year-old daughter, walking with her on the shoulder. You know, these things are personal. Uh, I wish I'd bring this back to how does it actually impact the people that are living here, that grew up here, and are raising their families here. So whether that's making it uh, faster buses, uh, safer intersections, uh, more modes of transportation, we're looking at any and everything that we can do to do our part uh, to make this uh, safer and better for all Americans. So thank you for having me. It's great to be back home, and I'm happy to sit here through the meeting, uh, discussing the questions that might come up. And I also want to introduce Rene Luciano, who's also a DOT, he's one of our borough planners. Uh, we have three borough planners at DOT, and each of them covers about three or four different boards. So Renee covers Community Board 7, along with a couple other ones. So I want to make sure that you connect with Renee. You know, if there are any issues, like if you see a light that's out, or a sidewalk that's cracked, or an area where you think we should add a stoplight, or we should add a stop sign or a speed hump, you can submit that request at the Community 1 to our website, calling our office, or emailing someone with Renee or myself. You can log those requests and follow up with you as accordingly. So thank you for having me. Uh, thank you. Um, good to have you back. And just let me know that you understand some of the plights of this neighborhood because a lot of things are different because of like the Shooter Parkway, because of the different um, zones in different areas. So we appreciate you doing that. Sure. Uh, we can go with the minutes. Uh, did anyone have a chance to review the minutes? Go with the vote. Uh, Edgar Ramos, uh, the minutes. Eric Asensio. Eric Asensio, please give me a minute. Daisy Perry. Michael Reyes. Andrew Lewis. Here's the motion. 
DOT, what happened to the Fordham bus lanes and then uh, Marshall Bar- bike lane? Is that going to when is that going to be finished? There's a whole bunch of center medians, but nothing was planted so where the new crossing is. Just a heads up, we usually try to finish one topic of conversation yeah. before we right. right. okay. 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 cool. so yeah. we can. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's for DOT time. Uh, David, yeah. uh, okay. So when do you call those? Because the bus. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So on the corners or the ramps where you see the red block? Okay. The one the wires, where well, you, you gotta put, uh, not, they put some in without, in the, in the old days, they just cut them in there with the lines. That is an ADA regulated rule for the federal government. That curb cut is not there for courtesy. That curb cut is there 
for ADA people. And by federal law, it's not supposed to be blocked. So what you said is true, but somewhere along the line of reasoning, a councilman in, I think it was Queens, decided that if they didn't have a crosswalk painted, they will allow people to park, blocking the ramp that should be open to it a wheelchair to a ADA person. So that's why we are at where we are now. But now, now people just block the white ones, the ADA, and the hydrants, which is really not a DOT. That's an enforcement problem, and that's where we should take it. But being that the councils agree that if it ain't got a white line, ain't you can park. With or without a cut curve, which is, should be, federal law is against the law. By federal law, that's, that's illegal. You can't block it no matter what. So, to call in a precinct to, to give a ticket is not the solution. What we need, which I submitted two or three years ago, along the school lanes, there are curves that should be painted out. Commissioner Cobb said, send me the locations and they will paint them out for us. And so we will revisit this if that's what you agree to. And to paint out to, to, any, any, any crossing with curb cuts, if we send you a location that's never been painted, will you paint it for us? It depends on the crosswalk, actually. It depends on the usage, how many people are crossing that street, how many cars drive that street. No, no, no. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not saying what Keith said, I'm not saying the councilman Queens said, I'm telling you now, today, uh, we can't just go paint any street that's requested for crosswalk. When we do an Even if it has the wheelchair bound cuts that are federally or ordered that they're not supposed to be blocked. So the pedestrian ramps are not supposed to be blocked, period. So why can't no, you make So not there's a difference between a crosswalk and a ramp. Every corner oh, has a pedestrian ramp and not every corner has a crosswalk. Okay, so not every corner has a crosswalk? Not every corner has a painted crosswalk. So it's painted white, it looks like a ladder. But right. every corner has a progressive ramp. Or it should be, yeah. 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 So um, we're updating them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's another can of worms. No, no, wait, let me let me back it. So there, we are going back and updating all of our ramps. So you you'll see when we got there because you'll see there's a brand new red metal plate there on the corner. That means we just replaced that and that's a new upgraded pedestrian ramp. There are some areas like if you go way north to the Bronx border of Mount Vernon, there's some areas that may not have a, a perfectly built out sidewalk with a renovated corner. So I'd be, I'd be incorrect to tell you that every corner has a ramp, but every corner should have a ramp and we're getting to them as we go around and we're improving them, adding the red metal plate that increases the accessibility. Okay, what, which is what I, I sent an email today about that is why are you redoing the same corners when I have in the same neighborhood there are concrete ramps that have never been cleared once at all. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm seeing the same corners where I am being done three times, which is like, I wish I had that contract. And keep going <laughs> back to the same location and keep doing it over and getting paid big bucks when there's one down the block that's never been done. If you're right, there's also a lot of times when new buildings are required to do the pedestrian ramps and you need to go back to rip them apart and go. And then even after they just been finished, we try to sell the farm to get the CFO for our building, right? So it's kind of like a, you're saying, a waste of money. Well, what you're referring to There's is no communication there between DOD and DOT at that point. So what you're probably referring to is, yes, sometimes sequentially there are different reasons why a sidewalk, a street, or a corner would have to be dug up. Sometimes it's kind of utility, sometimes like a rise and put in lines, Sometimes a building is with construction and needs to clear the area. If there's any damage or anything done to that curb, it will be fixed. I understand. What I'm saying is, like, when the building is finished, yes. they have to do a BPP, right? right. And right. they do the sidewalks and they do the pedestrian ramps and everything in order to get a close out of the building. Mm -hmm. That happens, and I've seen a lot of times when you think of that, everything the same ramp that was just approved by the building. 
So we would go back to that same point as being improved if we're adding the new upgraded pedestrian ramps with the additional treatment. Um, okay. and, and so, well, more, I'm talking which more, more more of the DOB plans follow the guidelines for DOT for BPP. So, yeah, so DOT actually signs those BPP forms. So my signature is on all those forms. So we actually we do coordinate, we review it, we see what's being discussed, and I will go ahead and sign it to move forward with that BPP. There's a waiver for something, something of the sort. Sometimes they might say it was recently renovated, so we can't we get a waiver for not having to undo the sidewalk. And in that case, uh, we would sign a waiver for that. But a lot of times the sequence is just, it's hard to plan, you know? You might have a new building that's built in February, they open their doors in March, and then in April, a water line breaks, you know, on the whole sidewalk. Okay, like, we could see. not have a sidewalk for those three months. All right, but see, the excuse was an accident. I'm talking about a location where nothing ever happened. No new building went up, no, no disaster happened, nothing. You just come in and you do them. You just, case in point, St. Brendan's paid a fortune to have their whole sidewalk redone mm -hmm. and the curbs done with DOT approval. Mm -hmm. Six months down the line, DOT came back and we're going to start. In Easter, mm -hmm. redoing the sidewalks. The woman comes out, she's panicking, and luckily I knew your successor, Keith Cobb, the, the temporary commissioner. And I put her on the phone with him, and he was able to tell everybody, Paul, don't do nothing yet. And she couldn't understand because DOT gave them the approval to the company that did the work for her, and now DOT is coming back and ripping it up and doing it over. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to tell me that something that was approved by DOT and was not good enough to last six months? So, I want to get into generalities. You gave me now in front of what's here. Yeah. So, we can look at that particular example. We can look at that particular example and see what happened there. Yeah, you can. You've got to be research. Yeah. So, what I'm saying is, is, if you have specific cases where you think this is happening, send them to us, we'll review it, and we'll be happy to explain to you what happened in those cases. But there is no just bucket answer okay. for why we would go back to do that. Yeah, and again, and, and one case might be Verizon, one case might be Connecticut, one case might be an upgrade. There's different reasons for different things. Okay, but in all fairness, it's unfair for, for me or everybody to be beaten up on you because this is your friend's. <laughs> so, you know, don't be offended by it. I'm never offended. No, I, will, I will bring you up to speed. That's why I ask you. I'm good. Anything else? Just a, just, a, just a heads up. Basically, as soon as you left the community board and the issue started with Shoot off. Mm -hmm. Right. So basically what happened was they they lightened the enforcement of the cutouts as far as blockage. Because like wherever there's a T intersection, there's supposed to be a cutout. We're not supposed to block those cutouts for safety reasons for ADA applying. So what ended up happening was the city decided to back off on that. They still do the enforcement on the white lines, or supposed to do the enforcement on the white lines. Like there's a lot of things supposed to. They're supposed to do that, <laughs> but as far as the, the, the cutouts, for the most part, those got relaxed, and the community went crazy. Cyril, I know you went, you, you went ballistic on them, and that's just something that never changed. Um, the material change, that's why if you notice at first they were green, now they're different colors, is because there was a material change. The people said they were slipping on the, on the material that they were using, and that's why wherever somebody slipped, just put an action report, they fix those right away. There's somebody, that's, but that's, that's just it. There doesn't have to be a traffic accident, there doesn't have to be a crisis. But if somebody trips or slips and falls because of the cutout or they blame the cutout, then DOT comes and that'll, that'll be a little star. That one's gotta be done quickly. We gotta figure out why they fell. Is it something not right with it? Is it up a little on one side? It's a lot of things that can cause a free person to fall. Um, and they try to be responsive to that because, you know, uh, well, throwing the glaze there right away, they're there, they're taking pictures, and before the person goes to the hospital, he's already on the phone with the boy. So, you know, they, they have to respond just this quickly. You know, so thank you for that. Uh, Yes, sir. Uh, you can't expect the 5 2 to enforce anything when they're parking on the little sidewalk outside their parking lot, especially in front of the 5 2. Why would they enforce something over there? But with the Fordham bus lanes, the, the board was presented a presentation, but then out of nowhere just disappear. Can they get for the record something what happened with the Fordham bus lanes and why we don't have it? 
uh, and the Marshfield bike lane, it's still a lot of it is unfinished. Recently, they installed the protected barrier only across from where the 5-2 parks on the sidewalk, which is supposed to be the greenway. So there's the bike lanes and the greenway. So if you block the greenway, people are forced into the street because on the other side of it, there's no way to connect over there. And then um, for Gun Hill bus lanes, what's the status on that? And then has that reached us yet? Thank you. Sure. So the Fordham bus lane, uh, right now that redesign project is on pause. Right. What we've done, uh, what we said is for this year, we are going to repaint the line, which we recently did. Right. Uh, and we're working closely with NYPD for additional enforcement. Right. And actually MTA also just recently announced uh, that they're moving from ABLE cameras to ACE cameras, which will do additional enforcement on those bus lanes and bike lanes. So with additional enforcement, repainted lines, and more interest coordination, we're going to uh, take away what happened to bus speeds, what happens to transit in that area, and we'll re revisit the conversation. And then Marshall Bike Lane, can you just finish it up? It's been over a couple of years now. As a roller skater, I'm up and down it all the time, but certain parts are a little bit more attention was paid to. Where other parts, you see where they poured the cement, just a giant dirt pit where for a tree, hopefully one day, but can we like start getting that going? Sure. If people are using it, let's let's make it pretty. Thank yeah. you so much. Sure. And so welcome to the neighborhood. Well, welcome back to the neighborhood, I should say. Thank you. Thank you. It. No problem. So I didn't come prepared with an update on that particular project, but yes, I can sir. follow up with our team, for capital team. And, yes, uh, sir. And I believe it was called Marshall Luce Safety Improvement Project, like Marshall Luce SIP or something. Yep. Thank you so much. We'll get you that. Oh, and also the Greenway. The Greenway was supposed to be updated. Uh, it is, uh, I believe it's DOT, but then they also said it was parks because it goes through the parks where the new bike lanes are DOT, but there's like a crossover. So if you could like, it was a, there's a contract for it, but they never came to pave it. So then we ended up getting the bike lanes, but we should have that contract for the Greenway already done. So we should have two. And also the Marshallu Bronx Victory Memorial, I want them to put a pride flag on it. I've told it was parks. I was told it was DOT since you're the new guy here. Let's put a pride flag on it. Thank you so much. All right, we'll let that down. We'll yes, sir. Thank you. Just a heads up, when they started the Marshall project, they, doing, they, did, they tried to do first the stuff that was critical, that they could do. Some places they had to pour cement, some places they had to do more renovations. They tried to do the straightforward stuff first. Unfortunately, the weather changed created a problem because you can't paint the lanes when the temperature is not right, otherwise the paint just never sticks. And that has to do with the bus lanes and that has to do with the bike lanes. So some of that work got stopped. Um, and then other things to priority. The Gun Hill bus lanes, from what I understand, were opened in, uh, when was it, November when we went to that? Oh, they opened? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they oh, 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 started. Right, right. Yeah. I think I started the week after that. You were at the Brigham County. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Thank you. as far as I understand, the Gun Hill bus lane, the safety part for Webster to, uh, to Bainbridge, yeah. that was complete. Okay. They still had some uh, rescheduling to do as far as with the lights, and they had to see what, how their changes affected traffic flow. Mm -hmm. So while, that morning while we were there, we were noticing cars were backing up, so they knew they had to reschedule the lights and they had other things. That that project goes all the way to Co-op City, so there's, it's being done in segments. But from what I understand, <coughs> the majority of the work that had to be done as far as the secondary lane, the bus lane, and the, uh, the concrete islands for the passengers, that stuff was completed and is active. They added the light up on Bainbridge. They did a, a lot of the stuff for the safety of the pedestrians and the passengers. I think they got rid of that truck also, right? That food truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, guy yep, was, that guy was horrible. Um, I think he's on, he's on Gun Hill itself now, is where he moved to. Um, and I think they're still working with uh, the hospital to try to see what they can do with that parking lot <clears> to try to deviate traffic and try to work something out because they have no standing zones to clear a lane so cars can get in and out. Unfortunately, people with permits decide to stay parking in those spots and unfortunately that car is in that whole intersection up, especially in the mornings. Um, I think that takes care of all the situations today. Uh, sir, you got something? There's one, the intersection of Webster Avenue and Gun Hill, Clock. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. They're coming across with the new stuff now, it's mm -hmm. gotten worse. It is completely standstill. Right. No, they, saw, stuff they saw that because we got, like I said, well, while we were standing there before we cut the ribbon, we saw the like there's two cars at this light, but meanwhile there's 15 cars backed up on the other one. So that, that takes that takes timing, that takes trial and error. Right? They try one thing. That didn't work, okay. And then you have the, the, 
they extend the, the lane on the Run Sugar Parkway to get on, off on the government because of all the people that work at the hospitals and the different schools and everything else in that area. But there's just a lot of cars that go through that intersection. It's, just, it's kind of difficult to try to work out. You know, they try to set up buses for the people to park over by Botanical Gardens. That kind of worked, that didn't work. You know, they, they people want to drive to work, so people are going to create um, traffic, unfortunately. And, uh, and, uh, and another area that I noticed uh, there needs to be some sequence arrangement is at the intersection of Grand Concourse and Mushroom Parkway. So when you come to Mushroom South, the light is green, but then the other light is red, and then everything backs <laughs> up, and then the other Mushroom South turns green, and now people are going around the other cars are like in going into the little section. Um, so there needs to be a little bit more sequence in there. If the light on one should be south turns green, the other one should be green. And I also noticed that I have brought up at one point, at that intersection there's a crossword sign that goes into a grass area. Right? And now I noticed that UT came and installed one of those press to cross. cross. Yeah. Not to cross Mushroom Parkway, but to cross north south on Mushroom Park. You say that there's no there's just grass, no landing, there's no, no, no concrete. Walk, to there's nothing. So you're coming down. Mm -hmm. It's where the park is, so yeah. Where you're gonna come down to cross Mushroom Parkway mm -hmm. to go to the north side, there's an intersect there's a light there. By MSA? Mushroom Park and Wayne and Shalom. And then there's a push button to cross Mushroom Parkway, and now there's a push button to cross into the grass area. Mm -hmm. That still has, just, just to clarify, has two pedestrian. Just, just to clarify, because I know there's like three lanes right now. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's when you're going south. It's on so the this is Mushroom side. Parkway. This is the Grand Concourse. So this is Mushroom Parkway South. And here we cross Mushroom Parkway. There's a light here in a crosswalk. And there's a, a post here, there's a pedestrian crossing, and another one here. And this is all grass. Thank you for the clarification. Appreciate it. Because it's a, it's a big industry, so I want to make sure we're talking about the same. Because the woman looks at, oh, this is crap, we're not here, not looking to see on the other side. <laughs> Thank you. So, we'll, uh, so it's not a piece of the park in the south, but it's on the south. Right. Okay. Well, two notes there. One thing I'll mention is uh, we can go back and take a look at the timing for the traffic signals so we can make sure that it's going appropriately. But I will also note that we also get that complaint a lot of times too where drivers will say, how come I got a green light and I got a red light? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's actually on purpose. Because right. what that is, what's actually doing is traffic calming. Because if you give people seven green lights, <laughs> what are you going to do? You know? That should happen during rush hour when people are clogging the intersection. Well, I think, well, sometimes with rush hours, lots of when people are also rushing to get to work or to get home. Right, but I'm saying that it's, uh, every time there's a clock in the intersection of Mushroom South, right here, mm -hmm. there's a long line on into this intersection, so now right. people crossing here go into the round concourse. Yeah. So I'm, I guess like, we'll review this and take a note. We'll follow up with the traffic signals team and every now and then look into that and also the crosswalk with the new pedestrian signal to look at uh, what's happening. It's likely that hopefully we're Probably part of the, big, the bigger problem is to build out an actual landing spot for the person across the street. We'll follow both those items. But I just wanted to mention in general terms that when you see that confusing sequence, sometimes it's on purpose. It's not a, mis I, it's not a malfunction. I, I, but in this case, we will follow up. Um, is there anything else with DOT? Yeah. So by the monument on Marshall Park, right? Mm -hmm. Vehicles are going up the hill, I would say going west, but some people say north, <laughs> whatever, because the Jerome and you know. And so you're going up the hill, and you see the monument. You guys put in a separate lane on the left to make a left turn on the lane. When I first saw it, I looked at it and I was like, what? You have a blinking yellow arrow for a left turn. And I'm thinking, this is the box. 
that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I want to see data on other accidents. It's remarkable to me that, what does that mean? The oncoming traffic, if you go there, you'll know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. So it's the bar, something you the see. Is behind you, you're facing the statue. Correct. That's like, something you see, like upstate. Ah, the Bronx. So yeah. I'm thinking, like, people are going to be making a left turn against oncoming traffic with a blinking yellow. It's sort of like Broadway by the, the shopping mall, 230, whatever street. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yeah. They have blinking lights, too. Like, so this is like the latest thing. Yeah. Is it working? Too. Is it working? I, mean, I just came up. Yeah. Is, is it working? I mean, so uh, far, no accidents. Working as far as what? I didn't have an accident. Accidents? <laughs> no, but I mean, like, <laughs> I couldn't tell you if it was green or yellow, to be honest with you. I it's wasn't yellow. really paying attention. Yellow, <laughs> blinking. Yeah. When, when you have to go there and look. I was there. I saw it. I thought it was great. I saw it all the time. The, 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 the issue is, 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 the issue <laughs> so, what, what ends up happening is unfortunately the people that are driving and going through these intersections that common sense was used to think out and plan out don't use common sense. <laughs> and that's what creates a problem, right? The blinking yellow light is supposed to indicate caution. caution and when it's safe, you can turn. Why that's safe? Right, <laughs> right. Some people just think that you, you know what I'm talking about. That just means you have to put the gas faster and try to sneak in in front of the next guy. <laughs> Like I said, they, they do they do things using common sense as the as the as the guidance. And unfortunately, I know you guys from NYPD know this. <laughs> you got signs that say do not enter tracks, do not do this, and people feel, still <laughs> feel they're probably just gonna walk right here. Pay the bus fare. <laughs> yeah, you know, or yell at the bus driver when you can't pay your bus fare. Um, so that was a exactly. relatively recently uh, addition. Yeah. So why don't we just revisit in a couple months? We'll yeah, have it here in the data. So we can, we can pull up any crash data okay. and report it over to you. If I could just add on to that. Sorry. Yeah, okay. That's exactly where the cement was poured. It used to just be a light in the middle of the street, so you could get run over. Now there's cement, but like I said, there's a giant circle where there's dirt and stuff. The compost was planted, but nothing was planted. So I think if there's a tree there, it might make a little bit. Uh, like you said, it's not just a blinking just, light where just, you can see that there is a turn. But it, uh, I believe the turn is better than having them stuck on the in between. And it's a memorial. Memorials are for the dead. It's not a monument. Sorry, guys. But thank you so much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Memorial, yes, sir. Bronze Victor Memorial. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. yeah. They, that just got poured. Yes, sir. Memorial. Bronze Victor Memorial. So what will usually happen there is we coordinate with Parks. So Parks yeah. is the actual tree planting. So we'll yeah. let them know when we're doing a construction project and say, hey, when we finish this sidewalk, there'll be four tree pits. And they'll coordinate with the four. It's been, almost been like two years now that like the tree pit's been there, but no tree. So it's, yeah. And then you see the cars drive over that, not seeing that turn signal because it's not really properly marked. Yeah, so we can, we can, we can follow yes, up uh, with our colleagues at Parks and get you an update. Uh, I, I mentioned actually, I just came from Parks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was the Manhattan Parks Commission okay. before I was here as the Bronx Borough Commissioner. Uh, and so a lot of times, these things are done in batches by yeah. season, and they're done through an outside contract. Okay. So it might just be that they're waiting for the new spring contract to oh. come in line, oh. so they can get installed when it's warmer. Because we just randomly got the cement barricade, so it's like, oh, they're still actively doing it, but like, yeah, yeah we want our trees for the summer, why not? Thank yeah. you. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll coordinate with our colleagues at yes, the just to get an update on one of the tree plants. Exactly. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Which, when I first saw the barricade, yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? Why not the it's whole thing, right? Yeah. yeah, it's <laughs> mushroom park land. Yeah. To me, it looks like the New Jersey Turnpike. I don't want to see that. Okay. Or if you're going to put it up, maybe paint it green. I mean, is it just me? Yes. I guess it is. I'd rather not, but, but then you want yes, dead bodies there, but people running like, over by it's cars. It's supposed to look yeah. like a highway. Yeah. And that's what it looks like. Well, it's on the bridge, so you know, I don't think the car is parked on the sidewalk. Can we paint yeah. the green? I believe you can paint them. So we we do have uh, projects that we do with DOT that beautify yeah. certain areas, so we call them art so dimensions. Into Elizabeth, like an yeah, intervention called art. Uh, the one thing is that, you know, obviously there, there are costs associated to it, so usually we partner with the local community based organization that can fund the project. We like the community it. board okay. can pay yeah. for it. Yeah. You gotta do it through they got a budget. Or uh, do it through volunteers. There's different <laughs> uh, options to beautify those places. Well, so I also mentioned too that I think uh, it's important to know that at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is find more ways to protect uh, different yeah. uses of riders. So when it comes to bike riders, the Jersey yeah. barrier is one tool that we have, totally but there are different yeah. tools that we use. Like for example, you can see what we've done at the Grand Concourse with a raised elevated bike, but that doesn't work because cars <laughs> park there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we'll put the plastic uh, vertical delineators. It's, it's one right. Yeah. So there's there's different treatments you can do. Jersey barriers are the ones that 
helped the most to stop the cars from getting. Well, on March, so we had the little bollards first, but then a whole bunch of them fell down. Then now we just got that random cement on that one section. So it's like, oh, yeah. can't, we're not safe over here, but you're safe by the cops. We're yeah. on south. But thank you so much. We're constantly also, trying yeah. new, new treatments, new styles. Was, yeah. Queens Boulevard was actually redone recently, uh, last month, and they did something. It looks almost like a sidewalk, but it's just the curb. So it's almost like a uh, half a foot of concrete, and that way it creates a barrier, yeah. some protection, uh, but gives you some flexibility. So we're trying different things. All right. You mentioned bikes, so the city bike project. Now you put you store them along the Grand Concourse. So I was walking along the Grand Concourse. I don't have the exact locations, but one section, everyone, they're all in the street, taking a park. Then I get to one block, and they were installed on the sidewalk, meaning that people can park. And they were still on the sidewalk in front of the building. And you know what? There's a lot of room here to walk. Again, now my thing is, is then I come to the next block, and then they're back in the street, but it's the same sidewalk, the same length. Why didn't you, why was only one location fit instead of all of them being on the sidewalk? So uh, we try to find as many locations as possible. We review both sidewalk and roadbed locations. A lot of times the sidewalk locations won't work because there's tree pits in the way, utility lines, uh, different issues. It could be uh, a, a pole. So every every situation is unique. Uh, if there's a particular case where you feel like, hey, this one right here could fit on that sidewalk, I'd be happy to review that. Okay. Yeah, another thing is, is they, they, sometimes I'm like, why does it have to be 20 to 30 bikes? Why can't you <laughs> shorten them to fit them in? Or well, city bikes, it's got to be dirty bikes. I mean, I don't know what kind of contract you sign at legally. My thing is, is like, well, leave out five bikes. Mm -hmm. Put 25 here, because it fits in. Work with the community so everybody gets a piece of the pie here. That's all, that's all I'm suggesting. <laughs> right. Right. Me, I don't ride the bikes. Me, I don't drive the car. I'm a subway boy. Yeah. Hey, there you go, subway. I swear, I grew up in the Bronx. I only ride the subway. They don't allow me to drive. Take the bus. <laughs> 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 I agree with you, Sylvia. Like the, I feel that what is that is a big question for city bikes. Like, what is the minimum number of bikes that should be at the station? Sure. Like, what is that is a big question. <laughs> Just this is it. So as far as for DOT, right? I think what 2001 was when this project started. 2021 was when this project started. Um, we, we've been asking for numbers, right? So they said, well, give us two years so they have data A and data B so they can do a comparative. Because just having one number doesn't mean anything. So it took them to just now, end of 2023, to give us any numbers. So now, with our input and they're looking at those numbers, they can now say, well, why do we have four, a 40 bike station there if we're only renting three bikes a week? Or three bikes a month. Or, or they're not so, really not the bikes. So now that, they, is, now that they actually have some data, something to go back to, hopefully they'll, they'll start doing that. They'll start moving stations, they'll start eliminating stations. So they finally got the numbers. It took them forever to get it to us. So now um, people here have given us a couple of places, a couple of locations that they question. What's the usage of that side? Is it even feasible to have it there? Can we move it? Can we eliminate it? Like the Lehman College ones, those get used in and out all the time. Some of these other ones, they're two blocks away from each other, and they only put two bikes there, so it's kind of hard for them to have any usage if they're running the bikes. So now that the data is started, we finally have the data, now we're going to start to address those situations. So hopefully we can progress. So to answer some of your questions, uh, what we try to focus on is density. It's putting a lot of bikes in a lot of stations in congregated areas that creates more usage. We want to put them near schools, near parks, near train stations, so that people can uh, go connect to other modes transportation. Uh, to your question about the minimum, we usually try to put at least around 20, a minimum 19 uh, of bikes per station. Sometimes there are more, and that's based on the projected usage. And uh, to the chair's point, we can go back and compare that based on the usage data and how many of those bikes are there. I also wanted to mention too that when you see a station that has a few bikes, more than likely it's because they're being used. Someone actually took the bike out and was riding and 
city bike actually comes back on and fills them back up with the van. For the, for the ones that have the, the pedal assist, they get recharged and their battery uh, gets improved and they get put back on there. If there's any that are damaged, that have a broken wheel or it's not taking the money, they'll take those back and replace with a different bike. So when you see an empty city bike station, that's actually a good thing. That I means people are using them. When you see them full and just sitting there, that means they're not being used and those are the ones that are really going to be busy. Um, I'd like to thank DOT for coming and answering our questions. Um, like I said, we're, we're thankful that we've got their ear and they're, they're willing to listen to us when we come with things and issues. So if you have anything that you need, if you have questions about, or you may need to contact DOT or FIX, um, you can email Carla, you can get on um, Facebook or on Instagram and contact the board um, or you can write out a letter for us. And we'll try to get the information that you can that, that we can get you and see how they can help. Like I said, I, thankfully over the last couple of years they the got us our key for very very vocal here and very helpful here. And we know that we have somebody that was part of our community board and we hope the communication will continue properly. Um, TD eleven has been very patient waiting on us. <laughs> so Officer Stelvin. Good evening, how's everybody doing? Um, happy New Year's. My name is Officer Benedict from Chancellor District 11. I'm here with the NCO too as well. Um, what I'm going to discuss today is actually the 20, 28 Days Crime Act, which is from December 4th to December 31st. We only had a total of five crimes. Three of them was mainly sleeping passengers. Usually what happens is, especially in the fall line, the thing is that the crazy part about it is that you could take the train for on 125th. It could happen on 125th, you fall asleep, a long go away, your probably your items goes missing. Next thing you see, you wake up at the end of the line, which is boot lawn. So if you wake up on boot lawn, next thing you see, if you report that your item is missing, then sometimes we take the crime. Because you discover that your item went missing actually in boot lawn, in the Bronx. Right. Um, then the other one will be the slashing that we took on, on with Shulu Parkway. I'm not sure you actually heard about that one in the news. Yes, it's still an open case, which we cannot actually go deep into it, but we do have some follow-ups on these two as well. The time and place of that? On Shulu Parkway? Yeah, the time and place. Um, Mushulu was on December 24th. It was like around 5 o'clock. Christmas Eve? Yes, Christmas Eve. Kids. Yeah. Like I said, we thank you. Wow. Like I said, we thank the responsible, the responsiveness of TD11. They, they come to, to the meetings and they make the presence known. We appreciate that. Um, these are these are the actual NCOs, for the different transit lines. They carry on the four line. They have the D, D, and D lines. So if you see them on the station, you know, they say, "Hey, what's up?" Um, like they say, if you see something, say something. And then you see how to play and something. Try to reach out to them. Um, they they accept texts now, right? The five one, the five one. Now accept texts. Um, they updated the trains, so basically there's signal through most of the tunnels. They, they updated that in the last couple of years. Uh, back in the days, they had no signals. You couldn't do any of that. Now you let them know what train number you're on. If they can't be at that station on the next stop, they might get three three stops down because they know where that train's going to be. You're on a set of tracks. There's only one way you're going. So <laughs> just to add to that, I'm sorry to us, well. So let's say you are in a specific train car. If you want to call 911, every train car has a number. If you are able to provide that number, that will help us a lot. Yeah. All right. But if you're not familiar with the number, so let's say you're in the middle. Let's say I'm in the middle train car. At least or at the end of the front. So at least if you need help, we know where to go. All right. You want the Usually a four-digit number is like a cabinet. I believe it's by the emergency hand call. Yes, it's right. actually on every corner, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. It's outside yeah. of the train and inside of the train. Because at least when the train is actually pulling up to the station, if let's say you said 1248, we are looking for 1248. Yeah. Thankfully, with the newer trains, you can actually see the numbers back in the days. The graffiti kind of covered the number. <laughs> yeah. so those numbers have been there. Those numbers have been there for years, even though we haven't been able to see them. But um, but yeah, if you look at any car at either end by the doors, usually if there's a there's a conductor's cabinet, it's usually right on, on, on top. And 
the number's pretty visible. Um, but sometimes if there's people in the way, you can't see them. But th that information is priceless to them because then they know <coughs> one, where the train is and how they can get to it. Um, you know, they got their, their thing on 161st, so if you're going down that way, they'll get you on 161st, or they can, they can intercept the train there like, if they can't get you along the line. In case anybody wants to reach out to me, my number is 917 238. Yes, I got 0276. Wait, can, can you repeat it? I'm sorry, 917 238 0276. Can you um, give us an update on the derailment today? Was anybody here involved with that? Or? No, that was uh, Transit District 3. That's a train station command that's mainly in Manhattan, but also on the uh, one, in, one in Adam Line, I think, in the Bronx. But uh, well, actually, it's there was injuries, I think 20 injuries, but all minor, and the uh, service returned to normal as far as that's right. It was direct. It's still an ongoing um, investigation, so we can not really Yeah, they said something like there were disruptions to the four trains, and I'm thinking. Well, anywhere where the one, the two cross, they had, to, they had to take power off of that line. And that's the one, two, and three line. So the two line on 149th Street, the two line crosses over to the four and the five. So that, that's why that impacts that. Um, but they had to take the power off so they could get the passengers off. And they had to fix the train because the, the, the work train was damaged. So they had to fix the work train to get it out to then be able to move the other train and get the one that's un, un, that was derailed. Underwear. There's a little bit of work that's left to do there, um, but, but they see they see what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. Um, so thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. Um, unfortunately, MTA MTA didn't send us any updates, and they didn't come to our meetings. Um, it's been a while. They haven't come since the Zoom meetings. They just had a change. Uh, they had a change in uh, in representation. There's a new person now that that represents this area person that did previously, she's in Queens, so uh, well, thankfully you know, we have somebody that, that is responsive and does answer our emails, so any questions you guys have on MTA, we can answer, uh, you know, get to the office and, and we'll try to get a response from MTA. Um, with all, like I said, with all the city agencies, DOT, TD11, or MTA, we just call the phone call away. That being the end of the agenda, um, do we have anything from the community? Any questions? Sir? I was at a meeting where uh, they're phasing out the, the pass card and you gotta use the, what is that thing? Omni card, um, the Metro card. Um, Omni card, Omni card. Omni card. Omni card. Omni card. Omni card. Omni card. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, us ancient mariners here from the, the last century uh, don't it's understand the first thing. So, it's now, now you're going to be bringing out your $900 phone to put on the thing in the subway so somebody else can snatch it from you. Um, no, actually, depending, depending yeah, on how you choose to do it, from what, I, from what I understand, they're going to have Omni machines, right? Cards that you can preload for the Omni system. You can also use a credit card. A credit card, if it's got the, um, the, the three little chip little symbols, in it, yeah. it's got the chip, you just tap it on the, tap it on the, Tap it on each other there. No, tap it. No, tap it. So I don't like tap it. Like, yeah, that's, that's the, the problem. You, you have to be careful with that, right? They sell, they sell these new wallets, right, that have a uh, coating. Yes. Right? So you R can't. Because I've been on the bus, and when the bus gets packed, and you're by that back door, they got the Omni reader, bleep, bleep, bleep. Mm -hmm. I've just paid for three people to get on the bus, but nobody can get on the bus. You know, so you call MTA, they actually correct it. They'll, they'll um, send back your money on your credit card. But. They, that's why they say keep your credit card someplace where it's not it's not going to hit. You know um, that happens a lot of a lot of women when they pass they got their credit cards in their purse. They they pay with their credit card, but as their purse goes by, their purse just paid for the person behind them. So they have these new wallets and new plate things that they're kind of aluminum foil. They got like an aluminum foil yeah, construction, yeah. and it keeps that from from them being able to read that chip. Um, so that's, yeah. that might be an option for you. Same thing for your watch to us. But yeah. No. But, oh. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. the way you can use your phone, you can use your watch. You yeah. just tap and go. Um, I go way back now. Yeah. Is that yeah. the thing that call us a credit card? <laughs> to your, to your point, Syria? 
to your point, I think uh, we'll invite MTA to do uh, an Omni presentation. Yeah. Um, you know, through work, I get um, uh, transportation benefits, and I just I wasn't able to to tie them together. So if I'm having issues, I'm pretty sure some other people have issues too. So we'll definitely invite them. Depending on your job, there are many jobs now. What they do mm -hmm. is. You can take money off your paycheck yeah. and put it directly to the MTA. They used to give you Metro cards. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. You're, not, you're not going to be getting Metro cards anymore. So now they have to go on to the new system and use a, either going to use a, like a credit card. But the credit card has that RFI chip so you can hit the, the, the train. And um, they have um, some of the stations that have already turned on me have the new machines where you can buy them. They don't, they don't put them up here in Kingsley because there's no, you know, there's nothing to do with the Omni. So downtown, they put them in some of the stations that were converted to Omni. So they are available, you buy the card, it's, almost, it's just a credit card, and you, that's what you use for your, uh, for your transit to get on and off the train. If I believe, I think they do have one there's of one those one stations. I was going to say. Oh, four. Four. Yeah. Four. Because of the buses, because you can still mm -hmm. use it on the buses. And it's a heavy, heavy usage uh, station. And Botanical Gardens and D-Train 205 has the taps already. They just don't have the machine to buy it. But you could just contact with payments and all of them. I read somewhere that they're going to make the exit gates wider so people <laughs> in wheelchairs or whatever. To me, I'm like, well, that just means more, yet more people can right. evade paying the fare once that door is open. Like, whose idea was that? And have you seen... Do they have it on this line at all anywhere? Not yet. Yeah. I think it is a pilot program down in the city. Yeah. Only in Manhattan. No, yeah, they so got it in Queens also. The air train. Oh, they got it on Queens too. The air train because oh, that for the passengers that go with the, with the luggage, mm -hmm. it's easier for them to get through if they got luggage and stuff. Gotcha. They don't have to go around and do the luggage thing, so it, it gives them more space. I mean, it sounds nice. Yeah. But it just, they, they showed videos of exactly what you're saying. One person will swipe when the doors open. You see. Six people friendly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Common sense again, right? Common sense says we're going to make it easier for the passenger and right. the baggage to get on, or with a package, or, or with a car, or a car, or a whatever the situation is. They try to better it for them. But there's always someone that's going to try to take advantage of it. Or maybe that the rules don't apply to them. So common sense, doesn't, unfortunately, doesn't always work out. Um, do we have any issues that we'd like to bring for our February meeting? For our February meeting? Any items for the... Uh, I sent four. Uh, I want to... <laughs> I mean, I would like to follow up to try to find out if DOT could do that study of the whole front of the two largest buildings in the box. Tracy Tower. Tracy Tower. <laughs> and the, the buses and the trains, and you've got the Bronx High School signs, and Diva Quinn. And it, it, if you go there, you have this giant building, and the pedestrians just get like empty out into the middle of the street. And then you have concrete meridians with different size plantings, <laughs> and you have their legal scooters running around. I mean, it is, it's, it's maddening, and I know. DOT has experts who can look at that and say, this is what we're doing. So just a clarification, um, that's been a topic of discussion with Renee. The first thing I, I tried to find out is, right, they're, they're renovating that train station, the one on Mushula Park there. They're yeah. adding the elevator. Elevator, right. So because of that, they're going to be doing some shifting with the sidewalks and stuff like that. So my question was, is there anything in that work that's going to change that, like they already have something in the works being yeah. done. Um, according to Renee at DOT, there is nothing currently being um, looked at on um, that because they've started the work. So anything study like that would have been started before the work got started. So, I, like I said, I, I brought it up to them and they're going to see what, what can be looked at and what can be done. And so they didn't fall under deaf ears. DOT is, is responsible for that. But like I said, my, my, my direct question was, is there anything being already in the plan? Like, it doesn't make sense to restudy a study. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we have some quarters that get studied every two, every couple of months, and, you know, and make a change, and people don't follow the rules, and it doesn't really help the situation. Like on web, web and uh, Sedgwick, and all, all over the place. But 
there, it was it was brought up to them and it was questioned. So they're, they're working on a, on an answer on that. So can you just make a general area for the to talk? Whether when you make that left off of Jerome, mm -hmm. if you go north on Jerome, yep. when you go to make that left, there's like four different islands. Mm -hmm. You have the one where the 28 bus stops, the one, the two. It's just, I mean, part common sense, right? Common sense is if people coming out of the building should walk to the crosswalk to cross. <laughs> but no, nobody wants to do that. No. Right? Also, also, also the cars that park on those islands. And the students, of course. Right, you got the cars that park on those islands. It shouldn't be parked on those islands. And now the person that's crossing really can't see. Or the cars that have to turn, they can't turn because there's a car on this side and a car on that side. And it doesn't leave the proper yeah. space. Mm -hmm. So, so, like I said, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot that has to be looked at there. You know, um, I don't think they're going to give them their own pedestrian crossing, right? Um, a bridge would be great. I mean, there's a lot of different things that can. A, a lot of things can be done. A lot of things have to be looked at. And but there's also cost effectiveness, right? But like I said, part, part of the problem is that a lot of these ideas get put in with the thought of common sense. The guy's not going to vote the one way the wrong way. They're not going to do that. Go to Florida Tower. That's what you see. You know, so they they try. <laughs> so, uh, I know I missed last month's meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, two months ago, I gave the thing about the flat script, uh, and I never received any information on what each plaque means and what way you can park in your parking zone. I didn't, I didn't Two months ago. I know I know you asked about that car and that, that car, car. Yeah, yeah. Right. and what had to do with the flat. And that's the same car that while they were doing construction wouldn't move. So the construction had to work around the car. Yeah. Um, basically on um, Decatur, Decatur and Decatur Bedford Park. And Bedford Park so the, the church the church that's there. It's in a no parking zone. zone and because they have a handicap plaque, which doesn't specify no parking zone. Park said religiously. It's just like it's it's, it's, it's permanently specific. <coughs> if, you, if you go online, their web, the city website explains exactly. Okay, what see, they once do. again, so technically you know, they can park there, but they have some kind of vague language. It's not supposed to be abused. The purpose of the so-called handicap park is that in a transient basis you can. You can park. It's not meant to be a private parking yeah. space every day and every night for a person. That's not the purpose of it. And you can report that person. Absolutely. Which I came to the board and did. Two months ago. No, not to us. <coughs> but no, you did. You did oh, to, yeah. to, the, yeah. to the city. Right. Well, we, we reported to us. Part of the thing that we we're also looking at is the fact that whoever it is that does park there, they got an MTA jacket on the seat. They got an MTA thing oh. to show that they work for MTA. Oh, uh, that's my PD. I look for MTA. They have MTA is so much stuff. But but we, we're trying to we're trying to see how we can impact this person, right? Because he's not supposed to use that MTA stuff. It's not MTA related. It's so you can go to sleep and not have to move your car. So we're trying to see. That's why I asked you for, for pictures about exactly. I tried to get more more specific more specific from you, but. And that's because there's there's different avenues you can go. Because they're putting the MTA so placard. If they're putting the MTA placard up there and it doesn't relate to something having to do with MTA, then you know what? They can take that MTA placard away. But DOT won't help us with that. We gotta go to MTA with that. But if I don't have all the information, but but I know which car you're talking about. That little white car is there every day, all day, without without fears. And I was shocked they moved it for the camper room on Wednesday. Yeah. They probably had to go shopping. <laughs> but 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 we're trying to look at the different. Like I said, there's a couple of different avenues we can we can impact there. Because they they figured with the DOT placard, they put MTA thing. Figure everybody's gonna leave them alone. But I know they had issue with that car when they were doing the construction and they were repaving that that little area. That car wouldn't move. So it, it it's being seen. It's seen as an issue. But the problem is, who's gonna take responsibility from? The DOT and the MTA to see, you know, what what are the requirements? Why, why right. Well, NYPD would only do enforcement, right? right? We're, we're trying to impact the, the permit, right? If they're if they're misusing the permit, then I mean, NYPD can take well, it. Who the issues those permits? This is not supposed to be standard. The city. I'm going to figure out 
what, is, what are the issues that that parked car is causing? And let's work backwards from those issues. If it's impeding construction operation, that's a violation that's enforceable by right. IPD. Mm -hmm. If they're impeding street cleaning from DSMI, that's a violation that is enforceable as well. Right. If they're just parking there more than you'd like to, that's not a violation. Right. So let's figure out what, what's the problem in addressing the appropriate agencies. Well, but then why do you have a sign that says no parking? The problem, so we, we, could, we could go back, so we do control the parking signs. Mm -hmm. We could do a review with our parking no engineering. We could change it to no standing. We could take away the parking completely. But, so like, there, there are different tools <laughs> to put in there. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm like like, let's figure out what, what is the actual problem. Let's fix the problem. Let's not just try to blanket or remove a car. <laughs> From what I understand, right, part of the concern is whenever there's a funeral service, or anything having to do with the church, right? Because that church, that church is given that space for church activities. Right? Yeah. Parishioners. Yeah. Right. So what's happening is that car is there seven days a week. So if they have a funeral on a Saturday, on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and they want to put the, 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 the casket out, depending on where he's parked, because he'll park anywhere within that that spot, but he's always there, whether he's in the corner or he's at the at the front of the church. He's, Oh, by yeah. the signage, there says no parking. Right. Well, well, okay. if, if there's a particular time that are no standing for a reason that was permitted, that's different. But even in the case of whether it's a funeral home, a church, a school, whatever it may be, the sign, the, the road that belongs to everyone. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's not like the spot in front of your house is yours. The same thing applies for everyone. Even the funeral home, they don't get exclusive usage of the curb just because that they, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. So that's also not necessarily a violation. Well, that's, those, those, are the questions, those are the questions that we had that we can yeah. have. But like I said, at that point, when we had that meeting, that meeting was November, right? So December, we weren't sure who, yeah. who the contact person was. So that kind of kind of got flowed. But, but that's that's one of the concerns we have. Like, what really are the rules of what, why I'm so sure that they will discuss next month is like the data on the car share program, like that has also taken part in all ways from the neighborhood, right? You give the two spots that are going to the land if there's a car from the that people that people just park yeah. there regardless, right? But like so if no one has signed up for a car share program in the neighborhood. What is the purpose of the car chair park? To provide free parking for people. Make it a loading zone. Okay. Right down the hill. When you get yeah, out of the zone, so walk down the hill. Do you have to use, I, I can guarantee you there are two vehicles parked there that have nothing to do with the right the car share. There's a green right. sign, so there's it's a green sign, it's a joke. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it, could, it could have been a great program, but it should be in. Is it doing what it's supposed to do, and the other team needs to respond to that. It can't do what it's supposed to do if there's no enforcement. Yeah. Well, it's doomed for failure. You when, can't. When I know, but the it, problem, by the problem, whoever registers the car registers <laughs> the DOT. Right? Just, just so the DOT should have data on who is registering in the neighborhood and where those cars are located. Yeah. Just so, so, Okay. The individuals do not register with us for their car share. They have their zip car, there's different companies, there are private companies is, that operate car rental uh, companies. So those spots are dedicated for them to park there. And again, similar to City Bike, if it's empty, that's a good thing because that means somebody is using it. <laughs> well, so if someone is parking that's not a, 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 a car share vehicle, that is a violation and that is enforceable, then you get a ticket for that. I just drove by it and it's empty, so somebody's using it. Somebody's well, buying groceries. Well, when, that first, when, when that first started, that first day, when they changed the signs, the no standing to the. Yeah, I, I reached out to Renee, right? And what was happening was people were asking, this, did this kick off and is it enforceable? Right? From the information I got, was the car share companies didn't have the supply to put cars in all those spots. Mm -hmm. So those things were staying empty all day because. They didn't have the supply to put cars in all those corners. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that situation has been fixed. I have to look into it. I've seen, I've seen one in one spot. There's a two, you know, everyone's two spots, right? It's two parking spaces. Mm -hmm. I've only seen uh, one of their cars two times in mm -hmm. three months. You know, and part of the problem we have, which is the same problem we have with city bike, is. We're, we're on the edges, we're on the borders, right? They, they usually pay a little more attention in the centralized areas, 
where it's easier to get everything to where it needs to go. When you have that one parking spot, 10 blocks, you know, whatever amount of blocks away, that one might not get serviced as much as the, spot, the parking spot that's right in the office, or that's visible, or that's being used more. You know, um, I know uh, he was stating that there was an issue with City Bike where, you know, some of the, the, the stations don't work. If you have a station in the city that stops working within 20 minutes, somebody's there and they're working on it, they're fixing it, they're adding bikes, flat on the bike, oh, we'll fix that. But these stations up here, the one up on Van Cortland and over by, the, by 233rd, they don't get that treatment. They don't get that attention. They were, they were called out on it, right? It wasn't just stuff we were seeing. It was stuff that the controller saw. So we're, we're hoping, we're hoping that, that gets fixed. That's why we ask for numbers about certain situations. Just so we can know. It, um, you know, the, 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 there's one on 195th of your own, right? I worked right across the street from it for a couple of months building the school. And I looked from 4 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, two bikes. <laughs> the same two bikes all day. So, you know. So now one comes in parts and takes another part. Right, right. I, there, there's no, but if you take the one over by Lima College, that one gets more activity as kids come out of the, uh, to the gate. So they come in, they park there, and, and you know, that one gets more. You know, I understand that that one might get more use once the armory kicks off and once they start doing stuff in the armor. But that might not be for a couple of years, right? <laughs> it makes sense to put, put the bike there because there's three schools right there, right? PS86, um, what was that, 147, and the new addicts they put to 147. And now they got a new one across the street, Kips Bay. So that might see more usage now. But from what we've seen, like this one here in the campus on 204, we really don't see a stock of bikes there. So is it not being used? Because the pedestrian, I mean, the, the neighborhood doesn't need it, or is it not being used because it's not properly equipped up for it? Yeah. It's expensive. Um, I believe they just raised the price on city bikes again today. this year. Yeah. yeah, it's expensive as hell. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, if you have nothing else for us, we'll yeah. Thank you. 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 Now you guys might want to invite the, the five to recent NCOs to these meetings too because it sounds like you guys have a lot of traffic issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you should call them up so they can come as well. They might be able to address those concerns mm -hmm. you have about that white vehicle. Great. Right. Good idea. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Catch basin. Catch basin. Somebody suggest a motion. I'm just going to bring the flooding on the Oh, yeah. And the environment is empty. Before the snow comes, too. No, the EP. But they do the, they do the, the they street. Do the, who does the shoveling? So they put the street this way, the water's going to motion to a turn. Right. I second the motion. Uh, All right. Yeah. Who does the shoveling, though? Is that DOT or Parks? Sanitation. Sanitation? Okay. Other one. Yeah. So we have to bring up the next 